formula to it. A very simple formula. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Slash It Podcast. My name is Jared, and yeah, this is the Slash It Podcast. Today, we are going to be doing the Friday the 13th Part 2 movie. If you haven't seen my bite size analysis video, if you're watching this on the day that it was released, it was yesterday that it got uploaded. Definitely go check that out. I put a lot, a lot of time into those, a lot of editing, a lot of script writing, all the jokes and stuff. Everything that's in there is all planned out. It's not improv. It was all incredibly planned out. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to go check that out, please do. It's in my YouTube channel. You can go check it out. But yes, Friday the 13th Part 2. It is probably one of my favorite uh, Friday the 13th movies. I liked it better this time than I did the first time I watched all of these movies. Because it felt a lot like a... I held the first movie at a higher like level than the rest. And then I watched it again from more of a critical standpoint. And less of a nostalgia, like, oh, it's the first one, so it's better. Um, part two is pretty much the first movie done quicker, better, faster, and more entertaining than the first one. The first one's really boring a lot of the time. What they do in the second movie, well, I don't believe it is the best Friday the 13th movie. That's something my brain doesn't completely know exactly where to rank all of them, which I'm going to be doing a video later on i'm talking all about that so yeah that'll be on my youtube channel probably after i make all the bite size analysis videos on all of them um but yes the story the characters the kills all of this is vitally important to this movie and it feels more like a friday the 13th movie i mean stereotypically like this set to me set the bar for like the stereotypes of the movies the first one didn't really even though the first has the more iconic kills of both of them, except the one, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, most of them are pretty much the same thing. Like, there's not a lot of, you know, innovation in the first one. But it's, I mean, for the time. But I'm saying, in terms of all of the kills in all the movies, time doesn't matter. The first one is kind of boring in that aspect. But this, this next one is more, this one is more entertaining and better overall than that one. So yeah, um, before I go into the main bit of all of these videos, um, if you want to hear me talk more in depth and actually go, you know, story by story beat by story beat inside of everything about this movie, go check out my bite size analysis videos. Um, if you were watching this on the day that it was released, it would be on my um, YouTube channel. Yesterday is when I would have uploaded it if you were watching this on the day that it was released. If you're not, um, it was a while ago, probably, um, you know, it was a, a few days ago, or a month ago, or seven years ago, I don't know, depends when you're listening to this, I really don't have that knowledge yet, um, <laughs> but, um, so I put a lot of work into those videos, I spend hours editing them, I spend hours writing all of them, I watch each movie twice, three times, I watch it once, when I watch it the first time, then I watch it twice to get all the story beats down, and then write, and I watch it the third time for this podcast. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into this that doesn't seem like it does. Let's just get into the main beats of these, this movie. The story of this movie is very, very stereotypical, but done better in a lot of ways than the original. So our counselors, the people we see in the beginning of the film, they are going to basically like a camp counselor, little counselor like training area. So basically they're like, they're going to go become like trainers for this camp counselors, uh, like training to become camp counselors. And they go up there and Jason, so it's basically like their cabins and stuff are like right next to Camp Crystal Lake. It's not actually at Camp Crystal Lake. So Jason is around, obviously, because it's Camp Counselor, so that's what he does. It's his main thing, what he loves to do, is screw with Camp Counselors. So we get our main named characters, and they do not, they don't even try to develop any characters in this movie, but the, like, the named ones, that's, that's what they do. Like, there's nothing grand about anyone else but the named characters that we have in this movie. So the story is pretty much just lackluster about anyone but the named characters. I mean, there's a point in this movie, which I talked about a little bit in my Bites and Snouts video, 
but um, literally in the first, so we see Paul Holt, and he's like the trainer um, of the movies, like the trainer of all the camp counselors, and quite literally, he he goes, what does he say? He says, quote unquote, um, he says, the rest of you, I'm sure I'll get to know very soon, after he just named every single named character in this movie. Everyone else was an extra that didn't matter. Um, no, no you won't. No, you really won't. Thank you for your, you know, hopefulness. But you're not going to know any of these people. Because they're all just going to disappear. Which they literally do at a certain point in this movie. They're just gone and they don't matter anymore. And I find that really, really funny. Like they just stop mattering at a certain point. So, nothing really happens in terms of a lot of the development of these characters so there's not a lot of story to this at all so basically to get there we meet our our uh, final girl Ginny I'm gonna call her Ginny I don't know if that's actually how you pronounce that but that's how I pronounced it in the video so we'll see um, <laughs> um, so she's having car troubles and then Paul Holt comes over and talks about her majoring in child psychology which comes back later because it's very obvious once you get there that they were calling back to it so then they all get together and they start doing their camp counselor training stuff and then um basically they don't really do anything else that's kind of like the biggest point and then and then they go on a run at some point and then you know they do the stuff that camp counselors do in these movies together when they're alone um <laughs> um so basically we get them you know doing all that stuff and then we get a lot more of jason and more of baghead jason uh, one point that I'm going to talk about is there's two things that I find really funny. Um, the first point is as the, the the beginning of the movie, as the people are driving up to the car or driving up to the camp counselor like training area, um, there's a log, just a whole tree, like a whole tree, just in the middle of the road, which is funny because I don't know how that would have happened when there's no evidence of any rain or. Anything that would have caused that, so I don't know how that happened. I mean, it's Jason, but like, they don't even like consider that why there would be a tree down in the middle of the road. Anyways, then, so there he had to move the tree, and the one girl out of the, there's two guys, and then one girl, and the girl just starts walking into the woods for some reason. Why is she walking into the woods? I do not understand that. She just, she's like, oh, okay, there's a tree down, let me just go walk into the woods over here and not help or stand by she just yeah i'm just gonna just go into some woods over here just see what i can find in the woods which coincidentally she finds a old like camp camp, uh, camp crystal lake sign but like why did she walk in the woods it doesn't make any sense to me like just stay with your friends because then you won't be in the middle of the woods why are you in the middle of the woods I do not get it. Anyways, so then we get them, they leave and they come up and then the rest of the movie happens. And then there's the next point, which is really, really funny to me. So there's a point in the movie where these Pearl Holt is like, okay, this is the last day that you guys can like leave the training area. Who wants to go out to town with me? And pretty much everyone like, literally everyone who wasn't a named character, like, everyone who wasn't a named character goes out to town. Everyone who is a named character stays in the cabin. And I, I'm not even kidding you. So there's one, I think there's one kill at the beginning of the movie. Somewhere around, like, kind of, yeah, Alice. Alice dies. Beginning of the movie. That's, sorry, that's a whole other, other thing I forgot to say. Alice dies in the beginning of this movie by Jason in the middle of, like, a suburban New Jersey town. I don't get that. Sorry, this is a little bit random, but I do not understand that. Anyways, we'll go back to what I was talking about. Um, so post credit scenes, like post pedal credits, pretty much every kill that happens, happens within like 10 minutes of each other, seven minutes of each other. Like, I just, I don't get what they were trying to do. Just make it so everyone spread them out because there's so much just like, boring stuff in this so like if they just moved the kills so that way they weren't so quickly next to each other this movie would be 10 times less boring than it is it's better and it's less boring than the original which just goes to show how boring the first movie is 
But if they just showed, like, you know, if they didn't make the movie so, like, it's, I mean, I'm not kidding you. It happens six minutes. There's four kills in, like, six minutes. That's Crazy Ralph dies. Um, a girl named, I think it's her name's Anna. There's Tiki, uh, Terry. I don't know why I said, I said Tiki, which is not a name. I said Vicky, Terry, I forget his name, the guy from the beginning of the movie. They all die within like six minutes of each other. It's like they forgot that they were supposed to kill people in these movies. And they just were like, okay, well, what, what, what are we going to do now? And then that was the end of it. I really don't get what they were doing here. And it kind of drives my brain crazy a little bit. Just make it so the characters and like the story revolves around specific characters dying instead of like just ignoring the fact that that's the entire point of these movies it just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever um so that's pretty much the story actually i will tell you the ending of this movie which i really really like the ending it's better than the original ending which is funny because the this ending couldn't happen without the original ending um so our main character runs into the woods earlier on we saw a shack um, that a cop had run into, but um, we didn't get to see anything from the back half of this shed. But then at the end of the movie, Jenny comes and she finds the shack and she runs into the back and she sees Pamela's decapitated head, which is very, very yucky looking. And then we get a lot of that um, interesting child psychology major stuff happening where she puts on Pamela's sweater and then pretends to be Pamela, and then Jason almost falls for it, but she sees Pamela's head, so if she just moved her head out of the way, she could have just been completely free and just killed Jason right there. But then Paul Holt, you know, he didn't die before some, he kept, like started wrestling with Jason or whatever. We don't see him until this point, and he wrestles Jason, and then Ginny takes a freaking uh, machete and then just puts it into his shoulder, and then he dies. That's how he, that's how he dies in this, like, quote-unquote dies. Because then we get a dramatic scene where they think that Jason's back alive, and then at the door, it's just Muffin, the dog in this movie, which Muffin is a really interesting character. Um, we'll talk about them a little bit, um, later. Um, so, then she holds Muffin, and then baghead, bagless head at Jason jumps out of the door, like the window frame, and then just kills him, which kills, well, grabs her. So I think he's, she doesn't technically die. She like gets left off in an ambulance, but we don't see Jenny ever again, ever. So I don't know if we're supposed to think she's dead or she survived or what, but that's, I don't really know what to think about that. But then, so that, yeah, that's the ending of this movie, pretty much, but we actually get a really long shot of Pamela Voorhees' head, just like I really zoom in and then it cuts and then it's over. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the entire story of this. I have a much more in-depth version of the story, like literally beat by beat by beat by beat in my um, bite size analysis. It's nine minutes, something like that. So if you're more interested in a lot of the story and a lot of like the little stuff, you know, little jokes and whatever I do in them, I would definitely go check that out. Um, this feels like a really, really long advertisement for that video, and that's not what this is supposed to be, I promise you. So we'll get into the characters, which are somewhat lackluster in this movie, if I'm being completely honest. There's, I don't really care about any of them. I'm just here to watch them get stabbed. So, you know, there's Jason, which I will talk about Jason's character and his, um, you know, clothing later. Um, but, so a lot of that will happen later. Um, a lot of Jason discussion will happen later. But we get Vicky, which is just is just a stereotypical Friday the 13th girl. Um, I think there's Anna, who is Matt's... Um, I think it's Mark. It's Mark or Matt, and I forget who's who. Um, I think Matt is the um, person in a wheelchair um, who is Anna's love interest. Like, they're, they're both love interests of each other. Um, and then there's Mark, who's just like, you know, the pervy weird kid in all of these movies that for some reason they have to have one. So annoying. It is so, so annoying. I hate that. Just 
don't put it in. No one cares. Just kill him. Quickly kill him off. No one cares about him. And then there's Muffin. And Muffin's really cute. I love Muffin. Like, good lord, that dog is cute. Um, then there's Paul Holt. Again, there's, I'm telling you as much things that you need to care about about these characters as they give us. Paul Holt is kind of, I think he, this, so they're, Paul Holt and Jenny are having a weird, like, fair kind of, but like, not an affair, just like they're not supposed to be, like, together or whatever, but no one really cares. Like, there's no, like, dramatic ending to that. There's no, like, oh my gosh. It's just another excuse for them to, like, kiss in this movie. Like, you know, have weird, like, kissing in this movie for no reason. But, um, it's just so, like, this doesn't make any sense. That's pretty much all of the main, main characters that you need to care about in this movie. There's the two main characters from the beginning of this movie that they don't matter at all. They really don't do anything at all. Like, I'm not even kidding you. They pretty much do nothing until they're dead. It's so stupid. Um, I'm just gonna move on to the kills. They're the more interesting things to talk about than anything else in this entire, entire series of this movie. The kills are the most interesting. They're not trying to be some interesting, like, you know, psychological movie. It's just supposed to watch people get stabbed. That's pretty much all they have going for it. Um, so yeah, we'll go, we'll talk about the kills. Um, the best, most famous kill of this entire movie is when there are two camp counselors going at it, or I guess to be camp counselors going at it. Um, Jason walks upstairs and stabs them both right through the bed with a like, you know, like a, I guess it's like a um, stick. Like what are those things called? Um, like a machete, it's a thing on a stick, stick. I don't know, I cannot think of the word. But either way, it is very, very interesting. It's just like a long thing with a arrow at the other end of it. Um, javelin. Those things. I stabbed him with it. So yeah, I think that's really, really interesting. It's kind of cool. It's It cuts very abruptly. Also, the one thing I do not like, I would never think of Jason as being this kind of person, but there's a scene, which I'm just telling you because the edit is really funny to me. Um, so Muffin, our very friendly dog, runs up to Jason, because we're in the first person Jason mode that they do in all of these movies, pretty much. So we get first first person Jason mode and um I guess the first like th three or four there's a lot of first head first person Jason modes but then we get um a lot of so Muffin runs up to Jason in this mode and he looks down and Muffin and then it cuts straight to a bunch of hot dogs on the grill just <laughs> just straight to a bunch of hot dogs on the grill and I think we're supposed to think that Muffin got murdered but then, as I told you earlier, Muffin is alive. But still, it's just really funny to me. Um, so then, earlier, so Anna gets stabbed. Um, Vicky, I think Vicky dies too. I think Vicky is the one who was like part of the couple who got stabbed with the javelin. Um, and then the other couple, like part of that same couple, got pinned up against the wall behind the door, which I think is really cool. And look, you can't see it until you like, shut the door and that's when first person Jason comes at Anna with a knife. I think it's Anna. Either, either Anna, or Anna or Vicky, pretty sure. Cause I know Terry is like the other girl that has muffin with her all the time. But then we get my saddest death that I really, really hate. It's not in a bad way, I just hate that this character died. Uh, Crazy Ralph gets, like, choked with barbed wire, basically, and it goes into his throat, and then he dies, and that makes me very, very sad, because I would have loved it if Jason, or if Crazy Ralph was just in all of these, all of these freaking movies, and then, like, would just randomly show up. Like, if, like, in Jason goes to Manhattan, if... Crazy Ralph was just in New York for some reason, or like on the boat with them, and he just like randomly shows up riding his bicycles like across the boat. I don't know. I just think that would be really, really funny. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna move on because that's pretty much all the kills. Um, talk about probably the weirdest singular decision that they could have come up with for this movie. Um, Jason, instead of a mask, instead of, you know, instead of anything, anything like that, anything, they could have picked anything 
but they pretty much put a potato sack on Jason's head and that's what he wears during this entire movie. It is really scary. I will give it that. It is really, really scary. The bag head is probably the most terrifying out of like, out of the hockey mask or the bag head. The bag head is probably the scariest, but the mask is cooler looking. The bag head just looks really, really silly. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of an interesting like thing. Um, so there's a lot of bag head Jason and parts of it looks really funny. Parts of it is really terrifying. And during Anna's kill, when she dies in this movie, it's first person. So we see she, cause there's like, there's a guy sitting in bed, like laying in bed and got a blanket pulled over him. And then that's all we see. And then Anna looks terrified and then all of a sudden it cuts back and there's Jason's bag headed face in front of you. Mm -mm. No, no way. No way. That is honestly really scary. This movie came out like 45 years ago or whatever it is at this point. 40 years, I think. Probably around there. No, that was terrifying. I, no way I would ever, 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 like that would drive me up the wall. I would be freaked out. But then there's a scene where bagheaded Jason just runs across the road and that is hilarious looking. Like it is so funny. It's just a man sprinting across a road wearing a bag on his head. It's so funny. I don't know how they got him to be probably the scariest he is, at least definitely up to this point because obviously he wasn't in it. But like up to that point, scariest to the entire movie is that one scene. Then Jason runs across the road and I do not get it. I do not understand what he was doing. If the actor was just playing him a little weird at that point or what was going on. But just the way he ran across the road was so freaking funny. And bag-headed Jason, bagless-headed Jason is really, really scary in this. Like, scary looking. They did a really, really good job at, like, you know, keeping that the same. Um, I, just something about the way his face is in, the, is in that. It looks deformed, but it looks human. It looks... He looks like a monster, but he looks human. He looks fake, but real. It's really hard to like pinpoint exactly what I mean, but just something about all of that is so well done. And also Jason is so weird in this movie. And the way he acts is so different. He's so more human. And I think that was because they were trying to come up with a reason why Jason was not a little boy anymore because of the ending of Friday the 13th, the original, Jason's a little boy. In this one, Jason's like a grown man. Apparently, he became, he went from like a three foot tall beast to being a like six, seven, you know, six, six at least tall man in five years. And like the way he looks, I don't know if puberty just hit him really, 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 really hard or like what happened with Jason, but they don't even really try to figure it out. They're just like, okay, well, we'll just, I don't know, we'll do something with him. We'll figure it out. And Jenny gives us some like, you know, reasons. She's like, basically, Jenny basically goes, okay, so he would be an adult now, right? And then Paul Hulk goes, yeah. And that's literally the only def like reasoning why he looks like he's six two. Six, three, four, five. Just, I do not get it. They don't know what they were doing. It takes, you know, right, just try, try to write something in without being like blowing it off pretty much. I don't know, it bothers me a little bit that they didn't even try or like give him, I guess it was to be more scary, which is why they wouldn't make him like 16. But that's how old he would have been. He's like 16 and he's like six, three. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm not gonna get too, too much on that. Um, I will talk about a little bit about why this movie is pretty much exactly like the same as like the original. And when I say it's like the original, I mean everything that happens in this movie is the original. And I feel like up until I get to part four or part three or part four, that's when they start changing it. 
but this movie is exactly like a quicker version of the first. It's like introduction, 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 one kill, introduction, like talk, 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 death, 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 ending. That's it. There's no, that's it. That's all that happens. I mean, there's literally a cop that shows up halfway through and leaves, like, Except this cop dies in part two, and he didn't die in part one, which I guess is a, a plus to a degree. I don't really agree. I mean, it's whatever, his death is just kind of like, I mean, it's kind of cool. He gets a hammer in the back of his head, which I didn't talk about earlier, but like, it does, just doesn't matter. It's like, it's not that innovative. It's just a hammer in the head. Um, because these kills are so supposed to be so good, but then there's just a hammer in the back of the head, which I don't agree with. I don't get how that's cool. Just, you know, I guess I'm desensitized to that stuff. Um, so the movie's actually like the same as the original, just way quicker. It's 86 minutes is the runtime of this movie. It, the original feels like it's three hours long and this one feels like it's an hour and 26 minutes. It's not hard to like fully realize like this movie is doing what it's gonna do. It's doing what it's trying to do and that's it. That's all it is, it doesn't try to do anything else it's not trying to like be anything that it's not and that's really really important for this movie because some of the other movies try to you know become some kind of like you know like take on like why Jason is who Jason is why Jason is this why Jason is this who is Jason like look at Freddy or Freddy vs Jason Jason's like afraid of water or like his only fear is being afraid of water which doesn't make any sense I don't know we'll talk about that movie obviously later when we get to it so yeah that's pretty much the ending of this podcast thank you very 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 much for listening to me talking about this movie which i have apparently have a very big like mixed bag of emotions about what i'm trying to like get across and like my feelings on this movie because i was all over the board today i thought i would have a pretty much streamlined opinion that is better than the first and then kind of like an okay movie but i just realized that I really didn't like it that much. It's better than the first one. And like, if this movie was the first one, I would probably put it higher. And like, on my opinion, I would put this one higher than I do the first one. Which I guess is really confusing to say. I like this better, this movie better than the first one by a thousand, thousand percent. It's just a better movie overall. So yeah, I think that's kind of interesting that I find it so confusing on my opinions on this movie. Um, so. I'm not sure if next week will be part three. Um, it probably will be part three. Um, and then the week after that, we will go in between part three of Halloween. And then we will be doing part three, part four, Friday, part four, Halloween, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. That way you guys can, you know, get a little bit of difference and I can, you know, learn watching different stuff. Um, but I'm very interested in continuing the Friday the 13th series as long as you guys want to continue listening to me talk about them um yeah we have i think it's about 10 more we have about 10 more movies in this series that we can write about and talk about um and you guys can listen to me talk about and i can write movies about write uh bite-sized analysis videos about them and other other types of videos so yes thank you very very much for listening and watching if you are on youtube and if you are listening to me on you know itunes or spotify if you guys would please um, rate it, whatever you guys think is fair. I'm not going to tell you to rate it five stars or five whatever it is on your platform, um, even though that would be much appreciated. You guys can, you know, I trust you guys to be as honest with yourselves about what my content is on the rating scale. Um, so just give it what your heart desires. Um, and please go subscribe and follow me on YouTube. Um, it's at, it's slash it horror, um, it's slash it is the name, but type in slash it horror, or type in slash it bites analysis, and my channel will come up. Yeah, so you can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, at slash it horror, that is pretty much the username on as many things that I am on, it's at slash it horror, um, S-L-A-S-H-I-T-H-O-R-R-O-R. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my at on most everything um so yeah please you know subscribe and follow us if, if you're on you know itunes follow us um you know make sure you get notifications for whenever we post new new podcasts um i enjoy i love making these i love making content 
I love this. This is the funnest thing that I do on a weekly basis. Um, yeah, so thank you very, very much for listening. Um, I'm going to say it again. Like I've said it the last few podcasts and probably will continue to say. Um, remember, tweet every day like it's Halloween.